Do PRP injections, platelet-rich plasma, help restore facial fat loss? I'm looking for the safest alternatives to restore facial fat that I lost after using a thermage at home machine. Is PRP a good alternative to restore facial fat loss compared to Restylane, Perlane, and other available fillers? I understand Perlane is very thick and therefore in some cases make faces look very plastic. I prefer a natural look. Would PRP possibly cause asymmetry, etc., just like fat grafting? Or is this a safer way to help your face recover from fat loss naturally? Thank you. Thank you for your question. You're, you, you submitted a question where you want to know if PRP can restore fat lost after the use of a home thermage device. And you went on to further qu ask questions about lumpiness from perlane as well as potential irregularities from PRP similar to fat grafting. And, uh, and I think that you're looking for some guidance as to how to restore what's been lost in spite of your intention of improving your skin with a thermal heating device. Well, certainly you're going to hear uh, some, good, some, I think, useful information. Uh, I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon, fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon, uh, practicing in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. Uh, PRP is a very significant part of my practice. I'm the developer and founder of uh, Trichostem Hair Regeneration um, for a, a non-surgical alternative to um, hair loss um, treatment, which is uh, an alternative to hair transplant, uh, where we use PRP uh, in addition to extracellular matrix. I can speak to you from a lot of experience using PRP. We use PRP a lot in our practice for skin rejuvenation. But I want to at least first give you a sense of what the limitations may be given what you've experienced. You have basically, uh, like many people, believed in the concept of heating the skin to stimulate collagen, to tighten it, to make the skin look more youthful. And although heat can induce collagen and make the skin look youthful, it's a question of how much heat. And it's a question of how high and over what period of time. We see patients like yourself in our practice constantly. People who, who got excited about the hype of the latest, greatest thermal energy device so you don't have to have a facelift or some, a non-surgical skin tightening a device and what ends up happening is their skin gets thinner, gets crepier, becomes, they lose that youthful look and volume. What happens is the heat conducted to the skin invariably affects the fat directly underneath the skin. And when you think about it, a young person is not a person who looks tight. It's a person who has volume, has a youthful glow to their skin. It is my, my, uh, my belief and my conviction that fat under the skin is critically important, not just as padding, but for its cellular activity and interaction with the skin to keep you looking younger. When we do liposuction, when we do body liposuction for flanks or for uh, love handles, we're going deep under the skin, but we always leave behind a thin layer of fat so that the skin looks good and doesn't ripple. A lot of times people overdo liposuction and the skin gets very wrinkled. Well, comparatively, Heating devices can do exactly the same thing. Now the challenge is with the heating device is if you think about it, when you heat fat, what can happen? Well, from my feeling is fat gets cooked. And when it's cooked, it's no longer viable. 
Now what we've done is we've injected patients with platelet-rich plasma and we've observed how the skin looks. Some, very often there's still deeper layers of fat that may help improve the volume. There is also within the skin, the skin quality itself can improve. We have treated uh, one particular patient who always comes to mind um, who had infections in the face that were recurrent due to a, um, a chronic biofilm. And what we did for her is we first treated her with platelet-rich plasma and then we combined platelet-rich plasma with extracellular matrix which is a wound healing material and we were able to also achieve even further. It's like we were able to build up the fat and build up the skin quality and then we were able to take it another level and we've been able to rehabilitate her skin very well um, in spite of recurrent infections. So I think PRP is a good option for you. I don't, I, I don't think you're going to get the volume that you had prior to your procedure. I think you're going to have to come up with a compromise, but you don't necessarily have to have all the volume back, but if you get skin quality coming back, then you're, you'll be in a better place. So I think you have to meet with experienced doctors who use PRP a lot and, and, and gauge, the, gauge your sense of confidence. When doctors have a lot of experience and know their stuff, you can feel it. And, for, and the reality is that there are a lot of doctors who don't use PRP, don't believe in PRP, and of course disparage PRP. But I can tell you from experience in our practice that we really understand uh, the, the benefits and we see a lot of good results uh, from it and we, I could tell you that many of my own staff members get PRP regularly to keep themselves looking younger so I don't think there could be a better um, a, a better supporting statement than that uh, as to its value. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.